Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Good Boxing Podcast with your host, Josh Size. I'm going to jump right into this episode. First things first, we got a fantastic weekend of fights coming up, and I'm going to do a bunch of videos, giving my predictions, um, what I think is going to happen, and the implications of each fight. First one I want to kind of touch on is Virgil Ortiz versus Agidas Kavalaskis. Now, Virgil Ortiz is one of the hottest prospects in boxing to date. You know where he comes from. He comes from the very, very esteemed, highly esteemed <clears throat> Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. Now, you've seen the highlights of Virgil Ortiz, tremendous pressure fighter and tremendous knockout artist. I think for the first time, he went past six rounds when he fought Maurice Hooker. So he's been scheduling himself to fight these long fights. 12 rounders, 10 rounders, but the guy just can't seem to get past a certain round because of his power. Now, as always, he is a prospect. So the zone golden boy, that's their golden goose. And, and they've made it clear, even though Ryan Garcia is probably golden boys, biggest star in terms of star power, um, following, etc. But you guys know the issues with Ryan Garcia, his mental health kind of took a sidestep a little break even though he's coming back but Virgil Ortiz is a perennial star he has the goods he wasn't the best amateur but you see that his style and his pedigree is suited for the pros now when I say this is a big step up fight for um, Virgil Ortiz I'm not kidding Virgil Ortiz for as much as I, I like him I see the skills he's been developed he's fought guys that he should be and truthfully, um, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to develop if you don't have a, a an extensive amateur career. Basically, the first couple of fights of your pro career are your amateur career. So no knock against him. But his big test, so to say, was against a big 140-pounder. Maurice Hooker, been in wars with Jose Ramirez. Fantastic fighter, respectable record, tremendous power at 140. So did he pack a punch? Sure. I'm not going to sit here and say that he didn't or doesn't or say that Maurice Hooker is a bomb or no, no, no. Maurice Hooker is a good fighter at 140. At 147, it was his first fight. And clearly you saw the size advantage. Maurice Hooker was taller, probably outreached Virgil Ortiz by what four inches, five inches. And when I rewatched that fight in trying to study basically Virgil Ortiz for my prediction in this fight, I saw Maurice Hooker having some success. Virgil Ortiz was coming forward and Maurice Hooker was catching him over the top with that overhand right. And that's what this fight basically comes down to. I hate saying this because I don't like to put fighters in a box, but it's pretty much, is Virgil Ortiz going to be able to evade the overhand right of Kavalaskis? Because as you guys know, Kavalaskis is a tough guy in the ring. He has tremendous power. I know Virgil Ortiz touts his 17 wins, 17 KO record. But if you look at Kavalaskis' record, he only is four knockouts shy of his win total. He only has one loss, and that's against... A very, very great fighter, possibly one of the top three pound for pound fighters in the world, and Terrence Crawford. And if you rewatch that fight, it was unique. David, um, not David, I apologize. Terrence Crawford was coming forward. He came out and he looked like he was out there trying to look for blood. He went to go knock out David. Why do I keep saying David? It's so stupid of me. Agidis Kabalaskis. And Kavalaskis actually caught him with the overhand right, which stunned Crawford. And according to the video, Terrence Crawford got dropped, but they called it a slip. I'm okay with both. Look, it's a live event. Referees make mistakes. But when you look at the fight, he caught Crawford and he caught him pretty good. Now, Crawford's also been stunned by Yorioki Gamboa. He, he's been hurt before, and he likes to go out on a shield, and he likes to engage. But you saw that Kavalaskis has power. Now, when I was watching the Hooker fight, as I said before, that overhand right was landing a lot. And Hooker, surprisingly, has a really, really good hook. It's kind of a cool name, honestly. So he was catching Ortiz with that hook as well. But in this fight, 
I expect it being a war of Virgil Ortiz coming forward, doing what he always do, does, looking for a knockout, right? And he just has to be wary of Kavalaskis is overhand right. And in this fight, what I predict is I think it's going to be a very close fight. I think the first couple of rounds is going to be Kavalaskis trying to outbox Ortiz. Ortiz likes to plod forward, comes forward, throws that body jab, which is dangerous for the overhand right. Because if you notice, Kavalaskis against Terrence Crawford, box Crawford. I was at the Garden. I was there. That was the same night that um, Teofimo Lopez fought Richard Comey. I remember watching this fight, and he actually had some success in that fight when he boxed Terrence Crawford. Now, Terrence Crawford's IQ for boxing is way higher than Virgil Ortiz, and that's not a knock on Virgil Ortiz. He's just been a professional longer and has had higher level fights. And I'm not saying that Terrence Crawford has this fantastic resume at 147 because we knock him for that. But coming up, he's constantly fought the best of the best in each division. And he's been in there with really, really good fighters in comparison to Virgil Ortiz, who's very young in his career and clearly developing. But what I do see is Virgil Ortiz has a tremendous body attack. And I could see Kavalaskis, if he's trying to box him or trying to bang with Ortiz, getting caught with a good body shot and going down. So that's my prediction. I think Virgil Ortiz is going to stop Egidis Kavalaskis. And I think it's going to probably be like the eighth or ninth round. This fight's going to go rounds. But I wouldn't be surprised if Kavalaskis hurts him in the process. Virgil Ortiz, tremendous fighter, comes forward, has very underrated defense, but he does get caught. I mean, when you're going forward and you're putting the pressure, it's impossible not to get wet when you're swimming. Just remember that. You're going to get hit. You're going to take shots, but that's his style. So clearly in this fight, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make Virgil Ortiz and Terrence Crawford have the same sort of resume in terms of fights on their resume for the last couple of fights because they're trying to set up that fight. Let's be honest. You fight Ajibis Kavalaskis to fight Terrence Crawford. That's his last opponent prior to the pandemic where he ended up fighting Kel Brook, and you guys know how that went. Terrence Crawford destroyed him. So I expect Virgil Ortiz to look fantastic in this fight, but it's not going to be an easy fight, and it's his true step up to 147. So let me know how you guys feel. Who do you think is going to win the fight? Put a round down. Personally, I, I don't like picking rounds because you're one round off. It's so annoying. But I do think Virgil Ortiz is going to keep his perfect knockout streak by knocking out Ajibis Kavalaskis. But I tell you, this is going to be a good-ass fight, and you should definitely watch it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, follow on Instagram at Good Boxing Podcast. We're back, and I'm going to have a bunch of videos for you guys today. And it should be exciting.